2024 is going to be an insane year for Nintendo and the Switch and likely more. And looking back, especially considering the evergreen titles Nintendo prides themselves on making, there hasn't been a bad year on the Switch. But already, coming out of one of the best years of the generation, we're looking ahead to 2024 as potentially one of the most exciting for Nintendo yet again. Every year since the launch of the Switch, we've looked ahead and talked about what we know is coming and what we suspect is coming, and as Nintendo is already on a hot streak, both have incredible potential. Let's talk about it. To set us up, let's reiterate. 2023 was one of Nintendo's best years, period. In release order, Fire Emblem Engage, Metroid Prime Remastered, Kirby's Return to Dreamland Deluxe, Bayonetta Origins, Cereza and the Lost Demon, Advance Wars 1 Plus 2 Reboot Camp, Xenoblade Chronicles Future Redeemed, Tears of the Kingdom, Everybody Went to Switch, Pikmin 1 Plus 2 HD, Pikmin 4, Detective Pikachu Returns, Super Mario Bros. Wonder, WarioWare Move It, Super Mario RPG, and DLC for Fire Emblem, Mario Kart, and Pokemon. That's three games over 90 on Metacritic, a whole bunch of over 80, and barely a miss in the bunch. And that's only Nintendo published games. What's more is momentum felt consistent in driving all throughout the year with each release breathing continued life into a seven year old platform. The reason this all bears mentioning in a video about 2024 is that leading into 2023, the word from various industry folk was that after Tears of the Kingdom in May, Nintendo didn't have anything notable and certainly nothing big, neither for the year nor evidently the rest of the console's lifespan. Talks were all about the nail in the Switch's coffin and how little life must have been left of this console. But then came one of Nintendo's best years, certainly in contention with 2017 for the console. And if it weren't for the end of life talks, every other year of the Switch's life cycle could have been articulated as the same. Leading into 2018, we only knew two games out of the 12 that Nintendo released that year, including Super Smash Bros. Ultimate. Going into 2019, we knew seven out of the 17 Nintendo published, including Pokemon Gen 8, Luigi's Mansion 3, and Link's Awakening, and it's the same every year. So far, what we do know for 2024 is Another Code Recollection, which is a completely remade duology of a niche DS game and a Wii game that wasn't released in North America that looks beautiful and is an exciting new direction of a genre that Nintendo doesn't usually tackle. Next, we know Mario vs. Donkey Kong is coming, which is not the return I was wanting to see for Donkey Kong next, but hey, I'll take it. Following that is Princess Peach Showtime. This has a ton of potential to be an amazing and versatile game and finally do justice to one of the most iconic video game characters of all time by giving her her own game that gives awesome characterization and varied gameplay. Let's hope Nintendo sticks to landing. In summer, we're getting Luigi's Mansion 2 HD, which dropped the Dark Moon suffix, but will absolutely find an audience on Switch after Luigi's Mansion 3 sold an inordinate, um, an inordinate, an inordinate, an inordinate, after Luigi's Mansion 3 sold a crazy amount of units. And then there's Paper Mario Thousand Year Door, which is, again, a remake of the classic GameCube game that had fans clamoring for it for years. And if you notice, hey, that's a lot of remakes, and there's really good reason for that. We made a whole video about it, check it out. And the last thing that's confirmed for Nintendo for 2024 is the final Splatoon 3 DLC, which seemed to be something of a roguelike. The aesthetic is amazing, and the gameplay is sure to be on point. So that's what we know from Nintendo for their 2024. From third parties, we know about all sorts of stuff like Aiden Chronicles, Unicorn Overlord, Prince of Persia The Lost Crown, Rift of the Necro Dancer, Penny's Big Breakaway, Another Crab's Treasure, Bandle Tale, and plenty more. But what we now know that we've seen is that we only ever know a small part of the picture for the year ahead as the year begins. So now let's talk about what we don't know that probably will make 2024 be the insane year that it's liable to be. For one thing, Nintendo's loose end that's been around since mid-2017 is, you guessed it, Metroid Prime 4. 2024 is, and I am very positive, the year that we play this game. I've never suggested that any other year of the Switch lifecycle. Several times suggested that maybe we'd see it with a release date a little further out and Metroid Prime Remastered or Trilogy HD as a short-term release date, but to me, Metroid Prime or Trilogy was always part of the rollout to Metroid Prime 4, and that has finally 
happened. But the reason this is significant is that it is very likely that this will be the Breath of the Wild moment from Metroid. Metroid has never had incredible sales success. I mean, yeah, 3 million sold for Metroid Dread is great as compared to lots of other publishers, but as one of Nintendo's premier IP, these sales are among their most moderate. And 3 million is the top end where most are closer to 1 to 2 million. But the reason I think Metroid Prime 4 is the series Breath of the Wild moment is twofold. For one thing, Breath of the Wild succeeded by boiling Zelda down to its core necessities and creating a game from that, with all of the breadth and imagination and possibilities that could mean. I think that while Metroid Prime 4 will look a lot more like Primes 1 through 3 than Breath of the Wild did like Ocarina of Time, it has been given the time, attention, staff, and consideration to work out any kinks that make it less than a masterpiece. And the second thing this means is that where Breath of the Wild is now around three times better selling than the next best selling Zelda game before it, Ocarina of Time, Metroid Prime 4 will vastly outpace the sales of previous Metroid games. Sure, Breath of the Wild sold 30 million copies, but two years after that game came Link's Awakening, which has sold 6 million, which is a lot, but it's not that every Zelda game now sells 30 million. Tears of the Kingdom, on the other hand, sold 10 million in three days. The point I'm making here is that Metroid Dread is the best selling Metroid game with the proper amount of hype, marketing, game quality, and install base to make it do as well as it can. But some franchises just have more potential in 3D than 2D in this time. For example, Zelda, and I strongly suspect Metroid. I also predict that Metroid Prime 4 will include some version of online multiplayer, whether PvP or co-op, that will make complete thematic and canon sense, and that will help exponentially sell the game. The reason all this matters is sometimes a single masterpiece of a game can carry the quality of a whole year, and just a handful can carry the quality of a whole generation. I think that, alongside the existing solid games we know, Metroid Prime 4 will be at least one of those games for 2024. But the biggest elephant in the room is Nintendo's next generation console. Not only is the rumor mill pointing towards Nintendo's shift towards a Switch successor, so are their own actions. Rumors aside, holiday 2023 is seeing a huge uptick in Switch bundles and hardware releases that seem very evidently to be helping clear out stock in preparation for what's next. Nintendo, when asked for their responses for next generation and where the Switch is in its life cycle, has become more and more vague rather than stating that there are no plans for new hardware in the next year, which they've said and broken before. Now statements seem to more directly point towards a shift and are less intent on pushing back against the idea of new hardware while still keeping a good, vague PR response. Without having to prove anything here, let's talk about what this could look like, what it could mean, and why it's okay and even good to be excited about it. For one thing, even in a world where we're all wrong and there is no new hardware in 2024, We've already seen that there's room to be excited for the new year in terms of software regardless, not just because of what we know, but that we've seen that what's already been announced by the start of the year is always less than half of what Nintendo actually releases. But if we add new hardware into the mix, say coming out in September, that allows for three or four months of launch window quality games, which is extremely exciting. We've got a video that's basically done that'll go up soon on what franchises Nintendo might have been saving for more powerful hardware. Hardware. So subscribe to see that or check it out if it's already up when you're watching this and it'll be up early on Patreon. But the key takeaway is that new hardware will present new opportunities for gameplay, for gimmicks, and also for franchises that had their turn on Switch to come back with a brand new entry. On the Switch, we're not getting an additional new Smash or 3D Mario or Animal Crossing or Mario Kart or all sorts of other franchises that already had their turn, but on new hardware, anything's possible and Nintendo always wants to launch with games they're proud of. So that could very well be a cross-gen release of Metroid Prime 4 and a next-gen exclusive new 3D Mario or Animal Crossing or exciting and expansive Star Fox. Again, keep an eye on our channel for more videos and ideas of how Nintendo could use their historic IPs at their best potential. Nintendo is firing on all cylinders and 2024 has the potential to be another of those years for the history books. Like we said, we've been making videos about the next year since 2017, and this is the one with the most opportunities and possibilities in a long time. Not only do we have a nice lineup of games already announced that will start us off strong for the year, but we know that the known lineup going into the year is a fraction of what Nintendo will announce. Additionally, the wait for Metroid Prime 4 is very likely to be at an 
N alongside whatever else Nintendo announces, small or large. And finally, the biggest question and opportunity is whether Nintendo releases new hardware, which will inevitably release with new and exciting games that we wouldn't have gotten on the Switch, whether technologically because of a hardware gimmick or mostly because Nintendo doesn't like to double dip on certain franchises within a console generation. But that's what we think. What do you think? What has you most excited for 2024? What unannounced games would you want to see most? What colors do you think the next generation platform will launch in? Let us know that and more in the comments down below. While you're down there, be sure to click the like button. And if you'd like to support this channel, check out our Patreon for early access to videos, stream perks, and exclusive merch. Above all, subscribe to Redirect and ring the bell to be notified when new videos go live. Okay, that's it for us. See you in the next one.